Hello ladies and gents, it's the Beanie 101 here with some more NHL 15 for the next gen consoles. We're continuing with our Detroit Red Wings Be A GM franchise and we're not doing quite so well. We've got a pretty crappy record. So I'm going to show you some uh, tinkering that I've done with the lines. Uh, I want to uh, get the month of November over and done with and simmed and uh, we're going to have a game of the week. It's going to be Toronto. So uh, this is what I've done with the lines. I've changed them very slightly. A few of you guys said that Riley Sheehan should be getting more ice time because he has the potential to be an elite player. So I'm going to start giving him third line minutes rather than having him waste away on the fourth line. What I've also done, done is I've taken uh, Zyurko out. And I've put back Daniel Cleary. Reason being that uh, Cleary is an older, more experienced player. He's got better poise. He's got a poise of 85. And I quite like that poise stat. So we'll see if that makes a difference. Um, I'm going to try uh, and play around with some of my power play lines. So um, I did a little bit of experimentation trying to switch players around on the off wing. And one thing that I have noticed is I've got, I've got no right right-handed shooters everyone shoots left so that could be a bit of a problem uh, so I'm considering trading for somebody uh, who's a right-handed shot so if you've got any, any ideas of uh, who I could trade for then uh, please let me know in the comments below I'm also changing up my third defensive lining um, and I'm moving uh, Smith up to the second line and Quincy down to the third. Um, only because I don't want two uh, young-ish defensemen on the same line. But I have the same problem here. They're all left-handed shots. So uh, this may be something that we need to rectify. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to sim the month of November. But slap bang in the middle of November we are going to play the Toronto Maple Leafs. And I will show you some simmed gameplay footage of the Toronto Maple Leafs but let's see how we do in the sim up to this date so we're going to start off the month of November at Buffalo and we get a 7-5 win oh and we've actually got an incoming trade off well, what do we got here um, the Carolina Hurricanes want Petr Mrazek for a second round pick in 2016 now personally that doesn't look good enough to me. Let's check out our goalie situation though. So I'm going to attempt to... Uh, what do I do? What do I do? Okay, here we go. Let's have a look at our skaters. No, let's go across to our goalies and see who we have in the pipeline. So we've got Jimmy Howard and we've got Mrazek who's 82 overall and he's only 22 years old. He has the potential to be an NHL starter. But so does Patterson and uh, Gustafsson. Uh, so, uh, Jake Patterson might be a better option to trade away, uh, but I quite like him to be playing some AHL games. Uh, but Mrazek, 22 years old, 82 overall, I think we can definitely get more than a second rounder for him. Um, how many 22-year-old goalies do you see that are on the cusp of starting in the NHL? Not, not too many. Um, they usually take a little bit longer to, to develop. So I think unless Carolina have some somebody that they're willing to get rid of that can help me out, I'm going to reject this trade. So I'm going to have a look. They, they don't have a goalie I want, that's for sure. I don't even know why they're trading for him. Drew McIntyre is their backup at the minute. Nah. Okay, so skaters matching block. They don't want to give away any skaters. How about draft picks? I'm not see. I'm not even getting a 2015 second rounder. I'm getting a 2016 second rounder. This is this is definitely not a good trade. So I'm not going to do it. I think I'm going to pull the plug. But that that does pose an interesting conundrum for me. I know a couple of people have already mentioned that Mrazek maybe should be the backup to Jimmy Howard in the NHL rather than playing in the AHL. At 82 overall, he's not going to uh, be getting much better, just wasting away in the AHL. So I could call him up and then trade away Gustafsson. So we, we win two on the bounce, oh, and then we lose to Tampa Bay. So it's a good start to November. Let's edit our scouting assignment and see if we can get a few more... CHL players looked at and uh, uncover some of their attributes. 
I think I'm going to go to the WHL and let's scout forwards for five weeks. So we'll continue with the sim. And we've got a tough, uh, a tough few games. Uh, we've got the Blackhawks and we've got the Canadians. Not necessarily expecting big things from them, but we've already huh, got three wins, so we're improving to five, seven, and three. Can we just nick a win off one of these guys? No, we get shut out against Chicago, and we lose a close one to Montreal. So we need to bounce back against Columbus, which we don't do. We lose to Columbus as well, and we've got... Uh, what have we got here? Uh, on defense, what have we got? We've got uh, Zidlicki back. So he can come back into our top six. Ah, oh, we have got a right-handed shot. Zidlicki is a right-handed shot. Okay, definitely somebody that can be useful on our power play then. Um, so I think I'm going to try and... Uh, we'll carry on simming and then we'll get to the Toronto game. I'll, I'll change some things up. Come on, we want to win against Winnipeg. Otherwise, it's going to be four in a row that we're going to be losing. Yes, we win. 6-5. What a cracking game that was going to be. And so we get to Toronto. They are 12-6-2. Detroit are a rather disappointing 6-10-3. And we're going to see uh, what sort of things uh, this game is going to hold. But before I do that, I'm going to show you some of the stats. Let's see how our players are doing. And let's change our lines up. Let's bring Zidlicki in. So, straight over to defence. I think uh, Dekeza is going to sit, so let's drop Kindle down to the third line, take take Dekeza out, and who do I want to put in? Scratched. Zidlicky, you can come in. Yep. So Zidlicky comes in, he's going to be playing, hmm, maybe I do want him on the third line. I think I, I do still want Kindle on that second line. So Quincy and Zidlicky are going to make our third line deep partnership. Now this is what I don't get about our our, our defense. They're they're not they're not too bad. I'm going to put Zidlicky on the top power play unit. He's an offensive defenseman and he's a right-handed shot. I need him in there, and hopefully he can kickstart our power play from the back end. And is there anything else I need to do? Penalty kill. I'm not too fussed about Zidlicky on the penalty kill. Um, Henry and Helm are two good, fast, defensive players, so that's not too shabby. And let's have a look to see how our players are doing uh, in the scoring charts. So we have our first line of Zetterberg, Datsuk and Nyquist. They're putting up some really good points. Cromwell's putting up some good points with D-men. Uh, and then things are sliding off quite drastically. Um, Henrique is our second line centre, so he really should be putting up more than 7 points in 19 games. Um, Sheehan has been playing third and fourth line minutes and he's got four points so he's only a few points behind um, Adam Henrique so this is not looking like it's a particularly good trade from our point of view straight to, uh, at a first glance Jimmy Howard there has an 88.9 save percentage not great a 3.5 goal against average Gustafsson is even worse 4.6 goals against wow that is uh Pretty terrible goals against. So we're left scratching our heads still, really, uh, about what to do with this team. Should we blow it up? Uh, do we want to trade one of our superstars, or is it worthwhile keeping Zetterberg and Datsuk around? Um, I'm not so sure, but we're, we're going to move smoothly and swiftly on to seeing us play the Toronto Maple Leafs, and hopefully we can get our, our season back on track, really. We've got the, the rather uh, pilloried Dion Phaneuf. I know a lot of Toronto fans aren't particularly pleased with how Phaneuf uh, leads the team. Jonathan Bernier there skates out onto the ice. He's got a 2.99 goals against average and an 89.5 save percentage. But he has a record of 8-3-1 with one shutout. So he's having a much, much better season than Jimmy Howard at the other end. We're going to move on to Jimmy Howard's stats in just one second, and you're going to see a man with mm, not a million miles away from save percentage in terms of uh, compared to Bernier, but uh, a 3.52 goals against, and he's got a 5, 10, and 2 record. Not good enough from Jimmy Howard. We move to midway into the first period, and we have Cleary picking up the puck on the back end, and he plays it 
up the sideboards. Lupul manages to forecheck and get the puck back. He plays it to Booth. He plays it to, I believe that's, is it Nazim Kadri? No. I didn't quite catch who scored that goal, but a poor breakout pass. Tyler Bozak is there in the slot to uh, make it count. You see the pass to Booth, then back to Bozak, and Jimmy Howard can't quite get across in time. Plenty of space, far too much space for Bozak there. So the season goes from bad to worse as we go down by one in this game. We're now moving across to later on in the first period and the puck comes out. You've got Lidstrom who skates down the ice, plays it across the panic to Lidstrom who plays it again and oh Komarov can't quite get it but he manages to play it back to Lidstrom who claps it home. Jimmy Howard is beaten yet again. He's having a torrid time this season. And the Toronto Maple Leafs did not give up on that play. They get it down low. They manage to pick up the scraps and a nice pass to Lindstrom, who again is in absolutely acres of space. A D-man, uh, a defenseman is nowhere near him. Nowhere near him. And it's just not good enough from our Detroit Red Wings. So that is the end of the first period. The coach needs to go into the dressing room and he really needs to tell the players to buck their ideas up because a 2-0 lead and nothing really of note created by the Detroit Red Wings in that first period. You see some of the highlights here. There's a couple of shots. But Bernier was equal to every single one of them. And here we see the goal that made it 2-0. The Toronto fans go crazy. As well they should. So we're going to move on to the second period and we are in the midst of a power play. The puck tries to get cleared up the ice but we manage to work it back into the offensive zone and Datsuk has one bite at the cherry. He plays it to Zetterberg who hits a post. Datsuk picks up the puck again to Cronwall, to Nyquist, to Cronwall. And Datsuk with another shot and the power play just is not clicking. Some good looks there from Datsuk and Zetterberg. We hit a post. The goalie's best friend comes to Bernier's rescue. But you see the pass cross ice. Datsuk is really well placed to take the shot. He doesn't quite get everything behind it. And we go to very, very late on in the second. Miller comes up with the puck. He plays it down the ice. It comes to Helm, it gets knocked loose, Miller spins round, he throws the puck on net, he's in a prime scoring location and Bernier can't quite get his pads down in time and the puck gets slipped home. So Cleary and Helm with the assist, Drew Miller gets these Detroit Red Wings going, it's not one of our elite playmakers, it's Drew Miller, the grey haired assassin and we take another look at it here, a nice spin, a quick shot, Bernier can't get across. And we're making a game of it. We are making a game of it. So that's two periods down. And uh, the Detroit Red Wings will be happy that we're making a little bit of a better game of it. You see plenty of shots on net here. In fact, I do believe we were out shooting the Maple Leafs at this point in the game. So maybe unlucky to be 2-1 down. But we're going to move hard and fast into the third period and hopefully get a few more goals. Change up our tactics. Datsuk skates in. He holds fire. He plays it down to the other side of the ice. Nyquist has the puck. Plays it down to Zetterberg. Takes a wrist shot in the back of the net. The game is tied. Our elite playmakers... Coming up with the goods when it's needed. Ericsson and Nyquist with the assists. But this was all Henrik Zetterberg. He waited for the screen to be in place. And then he let a quick wrist shot. Go far side of the net. Bernier was unsighted somewhat and couldn't get across. We have a tight game. Can we push to go ahead? Straight off the resulting face-off. We win the puck. Quincy plays it to Tatar. Plays it to Henrique. 
And just like that, a loose puck. Who is there? Johan Franson. No, Joseph. Johan Franson or Joseph Franson? Johan Franson. I was right. Power forwards playing in parts of the ice where you expect a power forward to play. Right in the goalie's face. Picks up the scraps. Slots it above Bernier's block blocker. So we're now 13.51 remaining in the third period. Toronto are on a power play. Kindle throws the puck down the ice. Bernier, oh, what on earth is he doing? We try and get the puck free. Somehow Bernier is able to cover it up, but a quite ridiculous pass there. Not sure what Bernier was thinking with that one. One minute left in the third period. We've got another prime scoring opportunity, but we can't corral the puck. Zidlicki, right-handed shot. It gets deflected behind the net. Zetterberg picks it up. Nyquist to Cronwall to Zidlicki. Takes the shot wider the net. Zetterberg gets the puck again. It's knocked loose. He comes out front. Nyquist takes the shot. Bernier flashes the glove. And with 38 seconds left, the Tor Toronto Maple Leafs could be staring defeat in the face. Are Detroit going to win the game and halt what is a, a somewhat inconsistent start to the season? This will be two wins on the bounce if we can get the W here. We've got 38 seconds to close it out. A face-off deep in the Toronto zone. It's won by Detroit. Zidlicki to Franson. It comes off a skate and goes down the other end of the ice. Time is ticking away. Quincy with the puck behind his own net. It's knocked loose. Kessel comes up with it. Great save by Jimmy Howard just when it's needed. Henrique takes the puck out of the defensive zone. Skates it down the neutral zone. He misses the empty net. And Toronto come back. Kessel plays it to Holland. Plays it to Kadri. Van Riemsdyk. Oh, the puck's loose. And with 3.5 seconds left, it is absolute heartbreak for the Detroit Red Wings. We cannot keep a lead. We miss the empty netter. Adam Henrique has only just started his career with the Detroit Red Wings. And already, um, I'm not liking what I'm seeing. He needs to seriously buck his ideas up. Poor play from Henrique to miss the empty netter. And you can't miss those sort of chances because Toronto come back down the ice. They score the game time goal. And there's probably not enough time. It looks like 3.5 seconds. We are going to go to OT. Face off is won. Fanouf to Bozak. He dumps it in. That's the end of the game. Toronto fans must be absolutely delighted that they pick up at least a point in this situation. Scoring with 3.5 seconds left. That one Detroit fan with a cup on his head. He won't be laughing now. He will not be laughing now. And here we take another look at the game-tying goal. The puck just wriggles loose and Holland is right on the doorstep to poke it home. So we've got 24 seconds left of OT. We've got a face-off in the Toronto zone. Toronto win it. Pollack plays it to Joffrey Lupel. He's carrying it through center ice. He does a little toe drag. Mid toe drag, he takes the shot. And it's a real, real sickener. The Detroit Red Wings fought back from 2-0 down to make it a 3-2 game. Only for Toronto to level it up after what looked like Detroit were going to get the win. 3.5 seconds left and then in OT you see a really nice shot by Joffrey Lupul. There's the game tying goal. An absolute sickener. Another look at Joffrey Lupul. The toe drag and then shoots it between the D-man's legs and blasts it past Jimmy Howard. Howard is going to be shaking his head again at that one. Disappointing game again from him. And so the OT loss means that uh, we've still got a very, very indifferent record at the beginning of this season. We're going to sim until the end of November. Then we're going to have a look at the stats across the rest of the league and see how Detroit are doing compared to everybody else. So can we get back to winning ways with a W in Ottawa? Yes, we can. A 3-1 win versus Ottawa. 
A home game versus Philly. We have a shootout loss, which is another point, so not too disheartening. New Jersey, is it a win or a loss? Come on. It's a win. 8-3. 8-3. We absolutely smashed New Jersey. So hopefully Henrik picked up a few points there and we go to the end of November and we get a shootout loss against Vancouver. So a little bit disappointing if we tot up the wins and losses. We ended up with a record of 6, 5 and 3 for November. So it gives us a record of 8, 10 and 6 overall. Definitely racked up more wins. So uh, pleased that we have had a bit of a better month of November but it's still really, really inconsistent. And we need to... Uh, try and work out why we're being so inconsistent. Part of me says that our top line is doing excellently. So do we split them up and spread some of the love? Here we go. You've got Zetterberg, Nyquist and Datsuk all over a point per game. Datsuk, Datsuk has 11 goals, 15 assists. Zetterberg has 24 assi 26 assists. Incredible. Top goal scorers are Nyquist and Datsuk. And Franson uh, is there with seven. And then you've got players like Eric Cole coming up big with six goals. Tatar coming up with six goals. Henrique, 24 games, nine points. Not good enough. Do we split up this first line of Zetterberg, Nyquist and Datsuk to give Henrik a little bit of help? And maybe put... Uh, Tatar seems to be doing okay, but Franson? Franson's doing well. So maybe we drop... Uh, Maybe we bump Franson up to the top line and then bump someone like Zetterberg down to the second line. So you have a top line. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Let me know what you think, how we should set our lines up. Jimmy Howard has improved his save percentage a very little bit. 89%. Not really good enough. His goal against average has gone down a little bit as well. 3.4 is still a terrible goals against average. Gustafsson, uh, we may be saying goodbye to Gustafsson very, very soon because in my eyes he's only played one game and he's been horrible in that game and we've got someone like Mrazek waiting in the wings to take up the mantle as a backup. So just looking at some of the goalies across the league, is it unusual for somebody to have a 0.89 save percentage? You can see that there are some goalies having some perfectly decent seasons. The players that you'd expect, Price, Lundqvist, Crawford... Um, maybe not Reimer, uh, maybe, maybe not maybe not Reimer, um, but hey, if Toronto are having a good start to the season, they're having a good start to the season. Reto Berra is having a good season? Uh, okay. Um, so the goalies, it's not just that all goalie stats are suppressed. Uh, it looks like there are some goalies having some good seasons. Uh, let's take a look at the entire league and see how we are doing in the top of the scoring chart. So first off, we will look at goals. We've got Kane, Ovechkin and Nyquist. Nyquist is third on the goal scoring list uh, along uh, with uh, Taylor Hall and Patrick Sharp. So uh, some, some good performances there. Assists. Uh, Zetterberg, no surprise that he's uh, at over an assist a game that uh, he's top of the assist chart. And overall, Zetterberg must be doing pretty well with 30 points. Where's he going to be? So Kopitar, quite surprising to have him leading the league. 38 points after 24 games is a hell of a start. Patrick Kane, less surprising. But Zetterberg is up there with some uh, good company. The Sedin twins, Sagan, uh, Hossa, Taves, Tavares. Uh, there's, some, there's some good players there. Um, Alex Galchenyuk is having a great start to the season. So now we look at the team stats and we see uh, kind of where we stand in the NHL. You can see the Pittsburgh Penguins are having a terrible time. 7-13-3. and three. They're 29th in the league. Wow. If they tank and get Conor McDavid, that, that, is, a, that is a bad thing for the whole of the league. Um, Detroit, 73 goals. So... Actually, you know what? We're doing pretty well in terms of scoring. That, and we'd expect that. We've got our top line at the top of all of the scoring charts. So goals for is not necessarily our problem. Uh, we're putting plenty of pucks in the net. Um, you can see that we're, what, about 7th or 8th in the league uh, in goals for. Goals against, though, uh, where are we? We're way, way down there. 86 goals we've shipped. 3.583 per game. We are nowhere near the top of the scoring charts. In fact, are we only were have we only conceded fewer goals, fewer goals than Buffalo and Arizona? Man, 
Power play. Power play is dreadful. I think we definitely need a right-handed shot uh, amongst our forwards. So I want to see what you guys think about trading away one of our forwards. I'm thinking the most likely candidate is someone like Franson. Um, and then maybe trade away a D-man for uh, a right shot. Uh, a D-man uh, that can help us out on the power play. And then we will trade Gustavsson for somebody, I think. So uh, give me some uh, some thoughts about what you want to do. Um, all of these lefties in our team, it seems to be hurting us. Um, Tatar, uh, he's a second line forward, so I don't really want to lose him. But I'm thinking someone like, if I move Nyquist over to the left wing, drop Zetterberg down to the second line... Is that going to help out Henrik? You know, Datsuk has got loads of passing and loads of playmaking skills. But I definitely need to change things up and share the scoring around. I need to get my second and third lines on the board a little bit more. Eric Cole is having a good season. But yeah, all lefties. Absolutely every single one of my forwards is a lefty. And we've got to change that. We've got to address that balance. So it is... Uh, is Franson a uh, trading uh, candidate? Uh, someone like Abdul Kader, maybe? Uh, or one of our fourth liners to get someone young and right handed in there just to change things up a little bit? And on D, who are we going to get rid of? I would say uh, Smith, we kind of want to keep around. Um, maybe, maybe someone like Kindle is trade bait. Because Quincy is top. Four and Kindle is top six. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I think we've got a couple of trades that can sort ourselves out. A trade for a forward, a trade for a D-man, and then see what we can get for our goalie. But thanks ever so much for watching. Hope you're enjoying the Be A GM mode uh, for the next-gen consoles. If you are, then don't forget to hammer that like button because then... I'll, I'll know that you want to see some more and subscribe if you want to see all my content first. But thank you ever so much for watching and I'll catch you again next time.